This is 21st Century Reformation at 21STCR.org. Hello again, this is J. Dan Gill and uh, 21st Century Reformation. And again, we are visiting with uh, Anthony Buzzard and uh, just having a wonderful time talking about so many good issues and scripture and I don't know when I've had so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know if you're allowed to have this much fun, when it comes to, but we are. There's I no think. law against it. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> That's right. So, but we're just having a good time, and uh, we just got our Bibles out, and we thought you, we'd let you set in with us. And uh, I was just thinking about uh, an issue that uh, that we've touched on before uh, a bit, but. Um, and an area where I think there's a lot of confusion at times, but that's this whole business about uh, the keeping of the law of Moses. How does mm-hmm. that whole matter relate to Christians mm-hmm. uh, today? What what is how does all that work, and what is it that God expects of His people today? Uh, and uh, I know you've uh, had quite a quite a lot of thought about that matter, uh, and uh, but. We know that uh, there is in the Bible this this whole matter of the uh, of the law that mm-hmm. uh, is that came by Moses and was given to the children of Israel uh, when they came out of Egypt, uh, and uh, and there it is that occupies a lot of uh, area yeah. uh, territory in our in oh, our yes. Bibles. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what does that mean to us now as Christians? Then how how does what's that all about? How does that mm-hmm. work? Well, what are your yeah. thoughts? It's an, an issue very close to my heart because I spent almost like another life now, but many years ago I was involved in a group which insisted on Sabbath keeping. Ah, I see. And it, we defined ourselves as the only people who really were keeping the commandments. I see. That was the test commandment, yeah. that you rested on Saturday or Friday night for 24 hours. You were not to do any work. And we took that very seriously, so we felt that we were superior to everybody else because we were keeping that test commandment. I see. And the rest of you pagans were <laughs> were apparently going to church on Sunday and we had constructed some actually very false history that Constantine introduced Sunday keeping, which is quite untrue. I want to just mention that. He confirmed and he legislated on behalf of Christians who were already resting on that Sunday. Not a Sabbath, not a transferred Sabbath, but they were congregating on the first day of the week as celebrating the resurrection. Mm-hmm. That antedates Constantine by a long time. Mm-hmm. We know in the second century that Christian believers were celebrating the resurrection. So, But we had uh, some false history and I think some very poor Bible study going by which we insisted on the fourth commandment being absolutely binding upon us. Now that laid a certain burden on us. It's nice to rest on Saturday, but if you had a job on Saturday and your boss didn't let you off, let's say, at 5 o'clock on, on Friday evening or 4 o'clock on Friday evening in, in England, yeah. then you lost that job for the mm-hmm. sake of the fourth commandment. So what you're talking about here is not some academic mm-hmm. theological uh, mm-hmm. speculation at all. It's a very practical issue. So yeah. if we're and, tackling that And so issue, if that is what God requires yes. of people, then, then you lose your job. That's right. But, uh, but, but if it's not what God is really requiring of people, yes. then this is a great burden that we're placing Indeed. on folks. That we have to be very careful. Not, uh, yeah, isn't that interesting? It is. And, now, and you mentioned Constantine. Yes. Let me uh, uh, mention for the sake of any of our viewers that mm-hmm. are, are not clear about it. Uh, he was the Roman emperor in uh, the fourth century, fourth century. around mm-hmm. uh, particularly where you're thinking about around 325 and the mm-hmm. council mm-hmm. of uh, Nicaea. Nicaea. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and as we know there was a, a lot of havoc wrecked mm-hmm. about that time mm-hmm. with some of the issues particularly pertaining to Christ and yes. to God. Yes. Uh, but what you're saying is uh, whatever was going on regarding the, uh, the Sabbath issues, you don't think at that point he was introducing something. No, uh, this is a very important point. It can be established easily by looking in any dictionary, any history will tell us. Constantine certainly did have an important effect on the strengthening of Sunday worship. Mm-hmm. He said to the Christians, I now legislate in your favor. You can go on doing what you're doing. But it's quite false to say that he introduced the idea of Sunday being the rest day yeah. for Christians. That's, that's just wrong. Justin Martyr in the second century, 150 AD, mm-hmm. is clearly describing, and other church fathers are describing the first eighth day, the new first day, 
Not as a transferred Sabbath, by the way. Mm -hmm. They weren't saying that this was now the fourth commandment transferred to Sunday. I see. But they certainly were celebrating a new event, namely the resurrection, which was oh. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so that antedates it prior. Right. It's prior to the time of Constantine, yeah. definitely. That's just a historical fact. Right. And I would like to get that out yeah. for, the, for the record. Okay. You know? Well, I find it so interesting that we have a lot mm -hmm. of... Uh, our, our friends in, uh, who are very intent on keeping the Sabbath, yes. who will track to Constantine yes. this issue of, well, he's the yes. one that, that messed up the yes. Sabbath business yes. And, yes. and turned it into Sunday, yes. which you're saying really isn't a Historically, justified it's not idea. True. No. But at no. the same time, those same folks will turn and say, but you know Constantine, yeah. uh, you know, they miss the point that that he really did mm -hmm. uh, wreck havoc with our understanding of God and right. was, uh, was playing a terrible role. In, That's certainly uh, true. So in, he's, not, he's not a good figure. I think yeah. these emperors were really distressed at all the argumentation in the church and they wanted peace in the empire. Yeah. And so they put their stamp of approval. Yeah. Later in 381, you know, another emperor yeah. put his stamp of approval yeah. on the Trinity yeah. very strongly. Yeah. So that's another subject. But it simply is not true to say that Constantine was the first guy ever to imagine that Sunday would be the rest day mm -hmm. for the church. That's just false as a historical fact. Yeah. But it's gained a lot of propaganda among Sabbatarian churches. Yes, yes. And these, Dan, these issues are most important, I think, because they're not theoretical things. Mm. If you have to lose your job, mm -hmm. uh, and if you then also insist on keeping the holy days, the whole of the calendar of Israel, you can be in some difficulty in mm. this uh, current society. But you did this. You, you, you actually, did. in your, yes. uh, in your pra yes. faith and practice, you That's did right. for some years. That's well, right. Absolutely. And I did it out of uh, mistaken understanding. I, I was not educated enough mm -hmm. uh, to see that in the New Covenant, developed particularly by Paul, and I would say Jesus speaking in Paul, mm -hmm. Paul being the tremendous exponent yeah. of Jesus here. So not just Paul, but Jesus in Paul, I think makes perfectly clear that Sabbath keeping, the calendar of Israel and the food laws are not part of what Christians are concerned with. Mm -hmm. I think we can demonstrate that. I couldn't have done that in those early days. Yeah. I didn't have the tools mm -hmm. uh, to read the commentaries or even read the Bible itself. You know, the, the Word of God itself that transformed your thinking I think so. about this matter. Exactly. Yes. And, and if, you know, if this is useful for our audience, I think many, uh, many yes. are, are concerned about this. Surely. And they should Surely. be. We are all in favor of obedience. Sure. I mean, Hebrews 5.9 is a, a great and simple text. It says that salvation is granted to those who obey Jesus. Mm. That's mm. easy. Yes, Why yes. do you call me Lord, Lord, and you will not do the things that I say? Yes. Okay. If, in fact, Jesus is commanding us uh, not to work mm. from Friday sunset until Saturday sunset, this is a very serious issue. Sure, sure. And certainly we can argue forcibly, forcefully from the Old Testament in Exodus 31, that if you picked up sticks, you know, late mm -hmm. on a Friday evening, you're in, under the death penalty. That's right. These Very are serious, serious issues. You might as yes. well go and commit adultery, break the Sabbath. This is a perpetual and everlasting covenant, it says there sure. in Exodus 31. Sure. At, for all your generation. So reading that naively uh, and attempting to be a simple believer in God, we kept the Sabbath, right? Okay. And I see why now. Mm -hmm. There is, however, another argument in the New Testament that actually, I think, justifies the opposite point of view. Mm -hmm. And it would begin something like this. Circumcision in the flesh, mm -hmm. physical circumcision on the eighth day for males, is also said to be a perpetual uh, order forever. Mm -hmm. It's a covenant made with the Jewish people forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're going to argue for the circumcision, you're yeah. going to have to argue logically for the Sabbath. Yeah, right. Now, are we convinced that Paul is saying in the New Covenant... You all need to be physically circumcised because it says in the Bible that you should be. Mm. I don't think so, right? Yeah. So I would argue from that very clear perpetual covenant of physical circumcision to the equally clear perpetual covenant of Sabbath keeping. Ah, good point. You see? Yeah, this, is, yeah. this is where we get the thin edge of the wedge into the Certainly. argument, right? Yeah. And then am, am I uh, correct in saying that uh, when we're talking about sometimes uh, everlasting or lasting mm -hmm. or throughout your generations or but the sense is really uh, more that of perpetual yes. meaning that's you right. don't ever stop doing this you keep on and that's keep right. on through your generations right. uh, uh, but uh, if God himself yes. he is the originator of, of that law with yes. Moses yes. if God reaches the point where he's saying that's enough that's right the, yes. the, the circumcision thing that's enough that's right. now I'm, I'm, we're moving on to something that's right. that is the, uh, the fulfillment of that the better that's now right. 
the the perpetual keeping of it now ceases. That's right. Yeah, 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 under yeah. a different a different set, a different arrangement, a, a different yeah. constitution. Yeah. And that is our main topic today, isn't yeah. it? The beauty for us of the new covenant, ah, yes, which yes. is in fact the two Greek words kenos and neos. They mean brand new, something new, new. Uh, renewed. Yes, in a sense, but also something that wasn't there before. Yes, yes. And it's contrasted as in you know the new wine in the new wine skins. Ah, yes, and yes. the old wine, new and old. Don't uh, mix. <laughs> they don't mix. They don't work. Yeah, and right. the old covenant is passé. It's mm. antiquated. Mm. It's outdated in the new covenant. We need to make this quite clear. So we have to be very careful that we don't then mix the two covenants. Okay. So it's interesting that what we're saying is not that Christ came to kind of fix the law or even uh, or something like that. He came actually to bring a new mm-hmm. arrangement, yes. a new covenant. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, and so that we're we're not talking about him uh, coming and uh, you know it'd be like okay I say I'm I'm going to uh, give you a new car mm-hmm. but actually I come and bring you an the old car the car you've already had <laughs> and maybe you stick a new fender on it or something yes. that that doesn't no, quite that get it as I say here's your new car well it's new. really not right. it's it's the yeah. new is new and this new right. covenant right uh, as the scripture refers to it. In Christ Jesus, yes. this is truly new, yes, and uh, and not something old, redone, right. or reworked, right. or rehabbed, or yes. or expanded or extended. It it is new. The key, I think, is in that phrase in Paul. There is something in the spirit rather than the letter. Mm. So there is some sort of relationship between the old circumcision in the flesh and the new circumcision of the heart, which incidentally was also in the Old Testament. Right? They were yes. expected not to be only physically circumcised. Sure. To make sure that went to the heart. Right. That is exclusively true in the new covenant. Physical circumcision is not the issue. Right. Because now we have an international faith, do we not? Mm. And there's no Jew, Paul says, no Gentile. Now, he doesn't, of course, mean that you cease to have your national identity. Of course, we know. If you're born a Jew, you're a Jew. If you're born a Gentile, you're a Gentile, ethnically. However, in the faith, there is no distinction now. Mm. So the one thing you don't want to do is to re-erect that barrier which separated the Jews Mm. from Mm. everybody else, Mm. which then destroys the New Covenant, Mm. international flavor, that we're all one in Christ. It affects dramatically then the issue of Sabbath keeping and holy days. And the other issue then is food laws. Ah, yes, yes. Are we to insist that you must never touch pork or Mm. shrimp? Mm. Certainly in Leviticus chapter 11, it says quite categorically, there are certain foods you are not to eat on pain of death. The issue is, does Paul advertise that and promote that in the New Testament? It Mm -hmm. seems to me in Romans 14, he really does not. Mm -hmm. Here Paul says, I'm a Jew. Mm -hmm. We know he's a Jew. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian though. I'm convinced in Christ, he says, as a Christian now. Mm -hmm. I'm a Jewish Christian and I'm convinced that nothing is unclean of itself, unless you think it's unclean. Then yeah. watch out. Isn't to you, matter? in a personal sense, of course. You're, you're making it that way. Yeah, that's not Leviticus 11. It doesn't yeah. say, now, if you think that's If you nice think thing, it's not. Then don't eat it. <laughs> See, the difference is it's yes. stark. Good. And good. we had yeah, twisted yeah. arguments, language arguments, around that text in Romans 14. We said that Paul didn't use the words that were used in the Old Testament. That's actually not true, because in verse 20 of chapter 14 of Romans, Paul says, all things are clean. Mm, mm. The Greek word there is katharos as in the word catharsis. Yes, yes, yes. That's the very opposite word of Leviticus. There are certain foods there that are unclean, akathartos, non-clean, uh, right? Yes, yes. Now Paul is saying they're all clean. Now, you better be careful if you think they're unclean. It's just a totally different concept. Right, right. Stark Then you have a, you have a personal issue here, of a personal course. problem. Yeah, that's, right. that's a yes, different right. thing that, yes, than yes. that God has legislated right. forever that you're not to touch pork. Right. So we've created these divisions which are, again, could be said to be academic, theoretical, but practically they divide us all up. On my land, yes. And so, uh, we don't need that. And then uh, this, is, this sort of thing then comes to affect uh, a Christian's daily life yes. in very uh, amazing, intrusive ways. One thing that kind of has is interested me about all of this, and mm. I've, uh, I've found <laughs> this troubling, I think, and that is that it seems to me that when we say, oh, yes, we're going to keep the law, we're going to, we must, and all so on and so forth. But then it all seems to break down in practice because yes. when, it, when we get down to it, 
What we really wind up doing in practice is picking and choosing. That's exactly we say, well, now we're going to keep this part of the law yes. and that part of the law. Right. And then we say, well, what about this part? Well, kind of never mind that. But <laughs> yeah. so, but I don't think the law was a pick and choose kind of thing, no, was it? I mean, no. isn't Paul telling us very uh, succinctly, very yes. well, yeah. that the law is an all or nothing d- deal. If yeah. you're going to keep it, you got to keep it. And I mean all of it. That's right. And I, I don't find anyone doing that. I mean, it's I'm, impossible. Yeah. And everybody admits that. And, yeah. and, and therefore, we're pointing again yeah. to the illogicality of yeah. this mixing yeah. of the old and the new covenant and selecting the pick and choose method. Yeah. I mean, are we going to insist on prayer tassels? Yeah. Do you have to put the Ten Commandments up on your front door, literally? Mm-hmm. And so on. It becomes an endless nightmare, but it's very troubling for people because they're worried about their conscience is, is being damaged, you know, if they feel, well, we really ought to be wearing prayer tassels. Yeah. Because it says so in the yeah. Bible. And then instead of our focus being on Christ and things above, yeah. as Paul says, yeah, yeah. He, then we're, our focus is instead very much internalized. Yes. And we spend our days and afternoons, our nights, our evenings yeah. absorbed yes. in these issues. Yes. And that's, that's troubling to me. It's, it's, it, uh, and, and as you say also, yes. it becomes very divisive then. Because yes. some people are saying, do you keep certain days this way? Mm-hmm. And someone's like, oh no, don't do that. Yes. You've got to keep them this that's way. Right. And look where our minds are at. That's right. Instead of our minds being above, yes. as Paul said, our minds are actually on things beneath in right. very peculiar odd ways yes. that, uh, that don't work. That's right. Dan, you make a good point about picking and choosing. I mean, the logic of this law issue is what part of the law we're we going to keep. Are we going to insist on all of the civil laws? Are we going no. to stone uh, adulterers? I mean, mm-hmm. this becomes impossible. Mm-hmm. Are we going to offer sacrifices? We can't do that because there's no mm-hmm. temple. Mm-hmm. So we're all of us then stuck with not being able to keep mm-hmm. all the law. But then you get down to the issue of, of tassels. You know, they mm-hmm. wore tassels on their clothing to remind them to keep the commandments. Mm-hmm. And later, I gather the tassels were incorporated into the prayer shawl. Ah, yes. Are we going to insist that our men and women are, are wearing mm-hmm. these garments? Mm-hmm. That becomes then a very tense issue. And people, as you said, tend to define themselves around these markers. Like, we keep the Sabbath, you pagans don't. We keep the holy days because they're equally part of the, of the Sabbatarian system and so on. These become very, very um, engrossing issues, don't they? By which we tend to exclude everybody else except ourselves. We're the only people that are holy. We then, I think, easily fall into a form of self-righteousness that Jesus is against. It seems to me that people are picking and choosing, mm-hmm. and you can't say, "Well, we we keep. We're going to say we're going to keep, say, the fourth commandment in this case. We're going to keep that fourth commandment, but we're not going to keep the part about the enforcement of penalties That's for right. those who break it." Right. Say, so, "Well, we can't do that now yes. because the law wouldn't let us." Yes. That meaning the civil law. Well. Yeah. Excuse me, but I don't think it works that way. When, <laughs> if we're going to say we're going to keep God's law, you can't say, well, the civil people will be upset at us, yes. or they're going to be yes. angry or do something against us. Well, if the Scripture teaches anything, we ought to obey God rather than men. If that's what God really expects yes. in terms of keeping yes. the, uh, the seventh day, yes. and that's what we're supposed to be doing in the fourth commandment, then why aren't we keeping mm-hmm. the enforcement aspect of that? I don't think you can break that up. You can't just say, oh, well, we must keep the one, but then we're not going to do the other because it's not convenient or because it might be a problem if we we did that. So I think I'm really drawn to the thought of Paul Mm -hmm. uh, who is saying if you are going to keep the law, that you are required by the law to do all the law. Yes. You cannot pick. You That's cannot exactly. choose. That was never an option. Mm-hmm. You couldn't say, well, you know, I like some of this law. I think I'll keep some of it. <laughs> there was no keeping some of it. You kept all of it or you were guilty of, of all of it. Yeah. So I think uh, in uh, Galatians 3 and 10, yes. uh, I was thinking about that. Yes. Paul says, for as many as are under the works of the law. Yeah. Okay, you want to be under that. And that yeah. means you're, it's that over system. you. And yeah are under the curse. Mm-hmm. Well, what curse? There's a curse attached that goes with the law. Not not just some law, with mm-hmm. God's law, mm-hmm. there's a curse. Mm-hmm. And that curse is, for it is written, cursed is everyone mm-hmm. that continueth not in all. And that's the powerful word there, I yes. think. All. That's right. All things which are written in the book of the law to do them, not wow. not your not a matter of you can keep some things. You are under a curse 
a curse of the Bible, of the yeah. Scripture, yeah. if you do not keep all That's right. matters of the law. That's a good point. That's the law. What Paul is going to tell us, of course, is something better. He's going to say, guess what? God, the only one who could change systems, mm -hmm. the only one who could change the program, God has changed the program yes. in Christ Jesus. That's right. And he's made a way that is superior yes. and better in every respect. Yes. So it's like, again, uh, in the uh, fifth chapter, yes. Paul talks Absolutely. about in uh, verse 2. 2 and 3. Uh, he says, Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you are circumcised, mm -hmm. and circumcision, of course, in was the, the entrance into the law, mm -hmm. he says uh, circumcision, if you are circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. You're back under the old system yes. rather than under this new system of Christ that God has, has brought in. For I, verily, I testify again to every man that is circumcised mm -hmm. that he is a debtor to do the whole, the entire, exactly. the complete law. Yes. Not parts of it. So I don't think there's an excuse here. I don't think we can say, "Oh, we don't keep we keep the uh, certain dietary requirements," yes. uh, and uh, but we uh, and we keep this, but you know we don't keep that That's right. because well the civil authorities wouldn't like us doing mm -hmm. that. Well, since when is that a uh, you know option? Yeah, no, that's you know. right. If I may read those two verses again, just to Please. make our point, because they're in, sure. in the new New American Standard Version, they're they're equally clear with your version mm -hmm. there. But I think they're worth repeating. He's talking about freedom in, in verse 1 of chapter 5 of Galatians. Mm. Christ has set us free. So there's mm. an issue of freedom here, which is yes. very, very important. And therefore, keep standing firm. Do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. I mean, oh. these are stark terms. Who wants mm -hmm. to be a slave? Mm -hmm. I, I remind our, our listeners that in Acts 15, Peter actually refers to the law uh, as yes. a burden that our fathers couldn't bear. Now, I know yeah. there were wonderful things in the law and all that, but Truly. that's a very strong statement. Yes. That wasn't the happy situation, even for Torah-devoted Jews, that's right. according to mm -hmm. Peter. Mm -hmm. But even clearer is this Galatians 5, verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, am telling you now that if you get circumcised physically, that mm -hmm. is, if you're going to go that route, Christ will be of no benefit to mm -hmm. you. That's a shocking thing. You've mm -hmm. ceased to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Come on, mm -hmm. it's awful. You've mm -hmm. lost Christ. Yes. Now he repeats it in verse 3. I testify, again, a very solemn declaration mm -hmm. here, to every man. Now, I don't think he's just talking about Jews mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Gentiles mm -hmm. uh, or one uh, distinct from the other. That doesn't seem to be right. Every man who receives circumcision, ah. that he is then under obligation to keep the whole law. The entire law. And I want to say to those people who are uh, uh, wondering about this subject, what is this whole law which you better not keep? <laughs> better not try to keep, because if you do, you're going to be cut off from Christ. Wow. This yes. is alarming material to me. It's amazing. It's so strong. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I think it's tremendous. Uh, it's just, it seems to me that, uh, uh, that Paul is clear that if you're going to go in the direction of the law mm. or circumcision, yes. and here is uh, and the whole of the entire law. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, and of course, he's referring to circumcision not just as a medical issue, but rather as a religious yes, of course. issue. Of course. And uh, so he's. Uh, but if you're going to go that way, mm -hmm. then there is no in between. Now that's not. There's no. Well, we'll keep some of this, yes. or we'll keep whatever's convenient, or we'll keep whatever the civil authorities yes. let us do. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that's an option. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying you're either going to be in this, or you're going to be out of it, yes. and it's all or nothing. And Precisely. right now, it's disturbing to me that we have the people who say, "Oh, well, you know, this is an in between thing. We we, right. we don't keep all the yeah. law." Uh, but right. I would think that it would stir our minds immediately to realize that uh, uh, we're depending on Jesus Christ to as our sacrifice mm -hmm. to God mm -hmm. once and for all, mm -hmm. as the writer of Hebrews said, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and not uh, making uh, the sacrifices uh, uh, according to the law right. today. There's a huge issue wow. here, isn't there, yeah. that I think denominations have not faced. Yeah. I mean, we're thinking of our 23 million Seventh-day Adventist friends, for mm -hmm. example, who are very fine people in many oh, ways. Oh, yeah, I mean, They're dedicated. But the question is, are they dedicated to what is really a New Testament scheme mm -hmm. when they insist on the Saturday Sabbath? Mm -hmm. There's a billboard up here on the road saying that if we don't rest on the Saturday Sabbath, we are under the mark of the beast. Yes, so yes, I, yes, I, yes. I appreciate their, their genuineness, you know, yeah. the, the passion of their thought. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to work with the verse 
after where we stopped reading, where it says, you've been severed from Christ. This is Galatians 5, 4. You've been cut off from Christ. You are trying to get justified. And that mm. word justified simply means to be right with God rather than wrong. Mm -mm. To be in God's good favor rather than outside his mm. favor. If you're trying to do that uh, by law, then you have fallen mm. from grace. So my suggestion is, after these many years of thinking about this, um, we'd better be very careful about pulling one part of the calendar out of the Ten Commandments uh, yes. to the exclusion of the rest of the calendar mm, mm. and insisting on that as obedience because it's in the Ten Commandments. Mm. Therefore, it has some special status. Yeah. That is evidently false mm. because in Colossians 2, we should get right to that text. Mm. And this is Jesus speaking through Paul. Mm, mm. He's terribly worried about folk who are being told they must keep the annual holy days, mm. the new moons, that's mm. the monthly mm -hmm. celebration, mm. and the weekly Sabbath, mm. and that mm. Sabbath there is in the plural for grammatical reasons. A single Sabbath, we need to mention, is often used in the plural. It, it so happens, that's a gram mm. uh, grammatical language thing. But he's talking about the weekly Sabbath mm -hmm. there, the annual, the monthly, and the weekly Sabbath. Mm. That is one unit. He then calls it a shadow, a single shadow ah, yes. of things that were to come. And I remember that Adam is, in fact, the type, is the type of the one who was to come, right? Mm -hmm. So the is there doesn't mean that Adam is still a type. The type has now come. Christ has come. Yes. So these were things that were shadows of Christ. And guess what? Christ has come now. Mm -hmm. The new covenant has been inaugurated. So to take, again, the picking, choosing thing that you talk about, to say, well, this refers to the annual holy days and the new ones. We don't do them, but we do the annual Sabbath. Mm -hmm. is really a very tragic mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. to deal with a simple text. No. And I'm, I'm perturbed by that. Mm -hmm. Because I think 11 or 12 times in the Old Testament, you have this trio of observances, mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. The Jewish calendar is taken as a whole. And Paul is saying, don't let anybody tell you what to do in this mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. We had our twisted ways around that mm -hmm. in those old days. And I'm for suggesting to people that they take a good, long, new look at this whole mm -hmm. subject and see if they aren't binding themselves and their friends and their mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. to something that actually Jesus does not countenance. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think... Uh, uh, it seems to me that uh, this seems rather definitive to me what Paul's saying in Colossians 2. I think That's, so. That's uh, very strong. I think so. Very Unfortunately, strong. we have in our, in our contorted ways, you know, uh, when we come across a doctrine that doesn't fit with what grandmother taught, yeah, yeah. you know, this, we're all victims of, yeah. of the strong mm -hmm. binding effect of tradition. Right. Yeah. And what if I stepped outside my denominational yeah. <laughs> limits? Right. But we do have to face the fact that Jesus is our judge. We're going to be judged by him and what he said through Paul. Absolutely. And we're going to have to defend that and Judgment Day yeah, if yeah. we're going to defend it now. That's right. And so let's be very careful. As long as there are other folk who are equally serious Bible students as ourselves, mm. have a different view, we need to consider very carefully what they're saying. Well, once again, you know, and I was thinking about the, the thing in, uh, in Nicaea and Constantine. Mm -hmm. It still is, is just amazing to me how that we can have like our Adventist friends uh, who can say look at at, at, at Constantine and mm -hmm. the Council of Nicaea mm -hmm. and say oh he, he fiddled with the, the fourth <laughs> day oh yes. that's terrible yes. and then completely totally ignore yes. what Constantine and the others were doing regarding the disruption yes. of the first commandment yes. Exactly. You know, we're, we're going to worry about the fourth commandment. Yes. We're going to get the first one straight. Yes. The first commandment is the one that's going to say to us, you shall have no other gods before, Absolutely. not us, yes. before me. Indeed. How do we get a three-person yeah. God into this? Right. And yet at Nicaea they were doing that. And yet yes. our, our Adventist friends and others yes. who are concerned about that fourth commandment right. don't realize they may be actually in violation of the very right. first commandment. That's exactly I suggest right. we get that one right. Let's and then we'll talk about yes. the fourth one. No, but anyway, this is, this is amazing. It is interesting, yes. Mm -hmm. that Colossians 2, 16 and 17, I think, deserves a lot, a lot of study. Mm -hmm. Because the attempt to get round it, and this is always a bad sign, I, I've got documented you know, downstairs here five different attempts to avoid the obvious sense <laughs> yes. and one is you know well let the church of god judge you the yeah. body of christ is yeah. easy paul makes a, a clear contrast between the shadow the trio shadow mm. of sabbath holy days and new moons mm. and the substance which is christ the body 
the shadow being only a very frail uh, attempt to get at it. Yes, yes, of course. Now we're back to the, 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 the uh, foretelling of these things. The shadow yes. precedes the reality. But the reality has come. So the contrast between the shadow and the reality of Christ is obvious uh, there. Yes, Everybody yes. who's not in the Sabbatarian world sees it. <laughs> Nobody had any problem with that. Yes. Once you start retranslating that and attempting to make it say there's a shadow and let only the body of Christ, the church, tell you what to do. Ah, I see, yes, yes, yes. You're really desperate. I mean, you're, you're coming at the Greek there in a most unnatural way. Mm. And there are various other attempts to get rid of it. I would rather relax and say the calendar is a trio of things. It's mm. Old Testament. Now we have the international faith. Mm -hmm. We've got a new thing going, yes, a new did. covenant. Brought to us by no less than Christ. And his death. Indeed. Important. Absolutely. Very important. Wonderful. Yeah.